Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to start introducing the idea of elasticity. And to do that, I thought we would first look at a demand curve, as we see here, labeled D1, and first realize that every demand curve has an elastic and an inelastic portion to their demand curve. And then from there, in later videos, we will talk about uh, demand curves that are predominantly inelastic and other demand curves that are predominantly elastic, but let's keep in mind that every demand curve has both an elastic and inelastic portion. And this is important uh, because we'll see um, what happens with total revenue as we raise or lower price. So let's just review that total revenue is price times quantity, right? As a formula, it's the price of the good times the quantity is the total revenue received by the firm. And so in, let's call this graph A, we have a total revenue curve, that's a parabola, illustrating that total revenue for any good or service will rise until it gets to a point that um, it's at maximum and then falls. And that makes sense. If we were to raise price for any good or service, uh, perhaps it, we would see total revenue rising, but there, you would get to a point where the price is just too high for most households and consumers, and they would just stop buying it or switch to some alternative. So that uh, so graph A illustrating that parabola of the total revenue curve that it rises and then it reaches its highest point. We're going to see that it, it the the TR curve relates to the demand curve. Here we have our downward sloping demand curve in accordance to the law of demand, which is equal to average revenue, which is equal to price. How is that? Well, average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity, which is the average revenue gained for each unit sold, which makes sense that it's equal to price. The average revenue is the price that you sell that good at to a household. Total revenue is price times quantity divided by quantity. So they cancel. Effectively, average revenue is the price. So that makes sense. Our demand curve is downward sloping. And here we have the prices that households are willing and able to pay for a particular uh, output. <clears throat> and then margin revenue is the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity, which we see here. Margin revenue is less than the average revenue curve because we're assuming that the firm is not price discriminating. And this is something we'll talk about later in theory of the firm. For now, um, we don't need to go over that. But MR is illustrated because the margin revenue curve is the slope or the derivative of the total revenue function. So the MR curve is derived from the total revenue curve. And we see that when it hits zero, total revenue is at maximum. So when margin revenue is positive but falling, the total revenue curve is increasing but at a decreasing rate, and then it hits its maximum point where MR is zero, and then MR becomes negative, and the total revenue function then falls. Okay? So just a little review there for the higher level students. So let's focus on PED, price elasticity of demand. As a formula, Price elasticity, PED, price elasticity of demand is equal to the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Percent change is very important in econ. It is equal to the final value minus the initial value divided by the initial value times 100. So this is very important. You must remember this formula throughout economics. Percent change, final minus initial, divided by initial times 100. Okay, and we'll be practicing that um, throughout the course. So PED is the percent change in quantity matter or the percent change in price. So effectively, we can take any two points along a demand curve and calculate the percent change in price versus the percent change in quantity demanded. All right, and we will get different values. So for example, let's say that we have PED less than one. That's what we call an inelastic demand curve, meaning that consumers are not really responding to a change in price. 
How is that? Well, let's say that PED is equal to 0 0.5. So remember that's uh, 0 0.5 over 1, right? The percent change required and demanded being 0 0.5 over the percent change in price. So if we raise price by 1%, the quantity demanded will fall just by 0.5%. Uh, so not much of a decrease in quantity demanded versus the change in price. So consumers are not sensitive to that price change. There we are operating in the inelastic portion of the demand curve. Then we have uh, a value which we call unit elastic, where PED equals 1. Essentially, it's 1 over 1, so 1% 1 increase in price leads to a 1% decrease in quantity demanded. We'll talk about uh, the unit elastic portion in just a moment. That's unit elastic. And then we have PED being elastic. Greater than 1 is the elastic portion of the demand curve. So let's say, for example, at PED is equal to 2.5, 2.5 over 1. So we want to remember a 1% increase in price leads to a 2.5 decrease in quantity demanded. So here we see quantity demand is falling significantly due to a change in price. So here people are very sensitive to that price change. They don't like that increase in price, so they stop buying it or they switch to an alternative. Okay, and vice versa. So it's the same if, if I were to lower price, quantity demand would increase by that amount. And the same thing here, if I was to lower price by 1%, quantity demand would increase by that amount. Okay? So let's look at these two graphs, graphs a, graph A and graph B, and track what's happening to total revenue as we raise price. So we're going to start at point A. We have a quantity demand at Q1, price set at P1, price times quantity, this rectangular area illustrates the total revenue for this particular firm. So total revenue is at point A, right, TR1. Then the firm decides to raise price from P1 to P2. It causes a decrease in quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. And we see that the total revenue is increasing from point A to point B. Total revenue has risen from TR1 to TR2. And so when we see that the price is rising and the total revenue is rising, price rising, total revenue rising, we know that we're in the inelastic portion of the demand curve and vice versa. If I were to lower price, total revenue would fall. So the firm decides to raise price again from P2 to P3. Quiet demand falls from Q2 to Q3 and from point B to C. And total revenue rises again from TR2 to TR3. So Yet again, we are in the inelastic portion of the demand curve. Then the firm decides to uh, raise price from P3 to P4. Quantity demand falls from Q3 to Q4. Thus, we see total revenue beginning to fall from TR3 back to TR2, from point C to point D. Here, consumers or households are becoming very sensitive to that price change. The price is perhaps getting a little bit too high they either stop buying it or they switch to an alternative, a cheaper substitute perhaps. And then they raise price again from P4 to P5. Quiet demand falls from Q4 to Q5, uh, which is a movement from D to E. And we see total revenue falling again from D to E or from TR2 to TR1. So here we see that when we raise price and the total revenue is falling, we are operating in the elastic portion of the demand curve. Okay? Point C reflects the unit elastic portion of the demand curve. Right? At point C, when we reach a point where PED equals 1, this is where MR equals 0, this is where total revenue is at maximum. All right? So just to emphasize this, let's see if I can I'll choose maybe another color, maybe I'll choose red to really emphasize this, All right? Every demand curve has an elastic and an inelastic portion. So we see 
that from E to D to C, that is the elastic portion of the demand curve. This is where PED is greater than one. People really res responsive to that high price. And then from CBA, this is the inelastic portion of the demand curve. And at point C, right around here, this is where PED equals one. Okay? So let's analyze this as we would for a paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graphs A and graph B. Graph A, we're measuring quantity of output on the x-axis and total revenue on the y-axis. Graph B, we're measuring the quantity of output and price on the y-axis. We have in graph A, a parabola, which is our total revenue curve labeled TR1. In graph B, we have two revenue curves, one being the demand curve, which is equal to our average revenue curve, which is equal to price. And we have a downward sloping margin revenue curve labeled MR1. Average revenue is equal to total revenue divided by quantity, which again is equal to price. And marginal revenue is the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. We want to remember that the marginal revenue curve is the derivative or the slope of the total revenue function. Thus, when MR equals zero, total revenue is at maximum at point C. So let's look at a firm raising price and track what is happening to total revenue. At a price of P1, quantity demanded is at Q1 at point A, uh, with total revenue being TR1. Then the firm decides to raise price from P1 to P2, thus quantity demand falls from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. And here we see the total revenue increasing from TR1 to TR2. Since uh, their raising price and total revenue is rising, they're operating in the inelastic portion of the demand curve. So the firm decides to raise price again from P2 to P3, quantity demand falls from Q2 to Q3, and total revenue rises from TR2 to TR3. At P3, they are operating at the unit elastic portion of their demand curve. But from point B to C, or from P2 to P3, they're still operating in the inelastic portion of the demand curve, so they raise price and total revenue has risen. Now they raise price from P3 to P4, quantity demand falls from Q3 to Q4, and you notice that total revenue is falling from TR3 to TR2, or from point C to D on their TR curve, or from uh, or on their TR curve. So since price is rising until revenue is falling, they're now operating in the elastic portion of their demand curve. People are very sensitive to that high price. They stop buying the product or they switch to a cheaper alternative. And the firm raises price again from, PR, uh, from P4 to P5. Quantum demand falls from Q4 to Q5, which is a movement from D to E. Again, they see that total revenue decreases from TR2 to TR1, thus emphasizing again that the firm is operating in the elastic portion of the demand curve. When they raise price, total revenue falls. So every demand curve has an elastic and inelastic portion to their demand curve. And that's it. If you have any questions or, uh, or comments, feel free to comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.